Indeed, Abraham is the father of the two great monotheistic religions, Judaism, which is the foundation for Christianity, and also Islam. To understand the modern day problems in the Middle East, indeed to understand the history of all the Middle East, we need to go back and examine the life and times of Father Abraham and what transpired in his life and afterwards. So, we're going to zoom back to 1800 BC. Abraham, who was the son of an idol maker, was approached by a deity who said, look, I am the one true God and you are to believe in me. Now, Abraham, you are going to be the father of a great nation. From you are going to come forth a nation that was going to uh, be larger and be more numerous than the stars in the sky. Abraham said, great, but I've got a problem. I don't have a son. Which back in uh, those tribal cultures, not having a son, this would have been a very big deal. Now, Abraham's wife, Sarah, said, okay, here, we'll solve the problem this way. Our servant, Hagar, she's young, why don't you have a child with her because both Abraham and Sarah were old. And Abraham said, okay. And he goes and has a child with uh, the servant girl Hagar. And this child's name was Ishmael. Now, this deity, according to the Old Testament text, comes back to Abraham and says, no, 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 okay, that's fine. You had this child with Ishmael, but I've intended for you to have a child with your wife, Sarah. Now, both Abraham and Sarah were in their 60s and 70s like, look, there's no way that this is going to happen. But the deity says, yep, this is going to happen. By the time I come back next year, you're going to have a child. And according to biblical texts, deity comes back next year. Whammo, there is Isaac, son of Abraham through his wife, Sarah. Now, this created a bit of a tension within the household because... Ishmael, being the oldest, was the rightful heir to all of the you know, rights and benefits and the land and anything else that Abraham owned. Sarah knows this, that her son technically is kind of left out of, uh, is being left out in regards to custom. So she goes to Abraham and says, look, Ishmael's got to go, Hagar's got to go. They're a threat to my child Isaac, plus Ishmael's getting a little too interested in weapons and hunting, and I'm afraid that he is going to try to take Isaac's life. So Abraham casts Ishmael and uh, the servant girl um, Hagar out of the clan, out of uh, his household, out of his protection. Now, mind you, they're living along the Euphrates River at this point, and if you're not by the river, it's desert. So he is casting Hagar and Ishmael essentially out to their doom, more or less. And uh, now Ishmael had developed into a great hunter, and um, he was able to keep himself and his mother fed. And from Ishmael would stem a large group of people that uh, became known as the Arabs, or we now refer to them modern day terms as the Muslims. Now, the Muslims' term for their one god, his name is Allah. Now, if you were to follow Ishmael's path and the path of his descendants, um, they settle in the area that we now know as Saudi Arabia. And uh, they descended from this idea of one god into a belief in multiple gods. And that is all true until... 570 AD uh, with this man named Muhammad living in the city of Mecca. Uh, he's a merchant there, and we'll study more about Muhammad a little bit later in the unit, but a basic summary of the story is that Muhammad uh, gets this revelation, this dream, and these series of dreams from Allah saying, look, yeah, there's the Judaism, there's the Christianity, and they're along the right path, but they've, they've all gone astray, and these people in Mecca, they've definitely gone astray in worshiping multiple gods. There's only one true God, and it is Allah, and you are to be my prophet, and you are to set things straight. So Muhammad 
uh, speaks and writes for Allah, and uh, his words become known as the book, the Quran. Some spell it Q-U-R apostrophe A-N, others spell it K-O-R-A-N. But either way, it's the, uh, it's the original Arabic text of Muhammad, which once again was supposed to be speaking the words of uh, the words of Allah. And from Muhammad and the Quran is the foundation of uh, the fastest growing religion in the world right now, which is Islam. Now within Islam, uh, there are multiple sects and sections, which we're not going to fully delve into right now, but there's the Sunni, the Shia, uh, the Sufi, the Kalam, and the uh, Kharajite, which are also known as the Mujahideen, uh, which is a funky term to kind of stick in the back of your mind as the Mujahideen and the Kharajite are going to play a, an important role when we get to modern history. Once again, to summarize, from the Ishmael side of Abraham's line grew forth a great nation, the Arabs and the Muslims, and the foundations for modern-day Islam. Now, on the flip side of the coin, you had Isaac, son of Sarah, or Sarai. And Isaac he was born to Ishmael in his late age. Oh, excuse me, he was born to Abraham in his late age. And once Ishmael was kicked out of the house, uh, according to biblical texts, the deity came to Abraham and says, look, if you love me, if you trust me, you are to go up onto this hill and you are to sacrifice your son Isaac to me. Now, to us, in a modern day context, to sacrifice a child, uh, that's barbaric, that's abhorrent, that's illegal. You know, who in their right mind would do this? Now, animal sacrifices were a common practice back in the day in terms of appeasing the gods and keeping, you know, all of those things in line. And as we saw with the um, Madagascar 2, trying to appease the gods to get them to do stuff for you. And in that area of the world, there was a god, Baal, B-A-A-L, who, to whom child sacrifice was extraordinarily common. Uh, especially during the drought season, uh, to help bring forth the next bout of rains. So Abraham and Isaac, they go up to this mountain, and <clears throat> they, uh, you know, he ties up Isaac, and Isaac willingly, according to the text, offers himself to be the sacrifice. And an angel stops Abraham just before you know, he goes to finish off the sacrifice and says, okay, the deity has seen that you will trust him even with your only son or only legitimate son. And okay, you don't have to go through with the sacrifice here. We've provided a ram that you can you know, go do the sacrifice, but you're, you don't have to sacrifice your son. So from Isaac comes the line of people that we know as the Hebrews or the Jews. Uh, from Isaac came, uh, one of Isaac's sons was Jacob and um, and then from Jacob comes the uh, the twelve tribes because he had twelve sons, and Jacob's name gets changed uh, to Israel. It's a, it's a long story, but anyways, from uh, from Isaac and Jacob come the Hebrews and the Jews. Now they still believe that there is one and only one God, but th their term for him is Jehovah or Yahweh. And the Hebrews, the Jews, Judaism, uh, the foundation of their religion is what we refer to as the Bible, but is the Old Testament of the Bible. Because within the Old Testament, um, you know, it has the foundation stories and how the Jews end up getting into uh, Egypt and they become slaves and how uh, Yahweh supposedly uh, saves them. From slavery and he gives them all these rules and all these covenants of how to live as a free people and he promises that you know that he had according to the Old Testament had made the world that mankind had messed things up and that he was in the process of redeeming it and that there was going to be this Savior this Messiah who is going to set everything straight and this is another topic that we'll discuss in depth later well 
the Jews are spending all this time, thousands of years, waiting for this Messiah. And there are all these prophets who are saying, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. And then in around 3 BC, there arrives this man, Jesus of Nazareth, onto the scene, who claims to be this Messiah. And according to even non-biblical texts, does all these great and miraculous things. Um, and at this point, the Jews are under Roman rule. The problem is that he starts saying things that the Jewish people say, no, 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 the Messiah is not supposed to do that. So you have one group of people who believes that Jesus is the Messiah, and another group who says, no, 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 he's not, he's a false prophet, we need to get this guy out of town. Well, as you see from the picture, and hopefully know from other historical accounts, Jesus gets crucified. Now, the problem is, three days later, his body disappears. The Jewish leaders who had, you know, who pushed for Jesus to be killed, said that oh, his followers moved his body. His followers say, mm, no, he rose from the dead and he really was the Messiah. So you have this question: Was or is Jesus the Messiah? For those who say no, that Jesus was not the Messiah and are still waiting for their Messiah. This is the religion we now know as Judaism. It's that old Jewish faith tied all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but is still waiting for their Messiah. Who thinks that Jesus was a false prophet, had a bit of a crazy guy, and you know they're waiting for their Messiah to come. Now, for those who ask the question, was or is Jesus the Messiah in answer, yes, this is the modern religion that we now refer to as Christianity. Now, within Christianity, there are multiple, or excuse me, Christians, in addition to the Old Testament, also hold to uh, the New Testament. The New Testament are the written accounts of Jesus' followers, of Jesus' life, and uh, is the last 15, 20 ish books of uh, the Bible. And, you know, they ascribe about Jesus' miracles and what life means now that the Messiah, according to the Christians, had come. Now, after Jesus' death, there was um, one unified church. But as we saw with, the, uh, with Islam, things started to as there started to be disagreements, things started to break off and shatter. Um, so you had the Roman Catholic Church. Catholic is a word that means universal. So there had been one universal church, but then there were some disagreements of who was to say what is right and wrong uh, in the practice of how to be following Jesus. Um, you, know, you had these different important churches, some in Greece, some in uh, Rome, in these other places that were all trying to claim that they were the authority. And what is allowed and what's not allowed? Are you allowed to have images? Are you not allowed to have images? Um, you know, so you had this first break off of the Roman Catholics and the Eastern or Russian Orthodox, or the Greek Orthodox. You have this division, this split. And this division was over whether there should be something called iconoclasm. Are you allowed to have images within a church? The Romans said, yes, you're allowed to have crosses, you're allowed to have pictures of the saints, and so on and so forth. The Eastern and Russian Orthodox said no, because that's pagan worship. So, yeah, they had uh, that branching off, uh, they, and even to this day, there's that branch. And then in 1516 AD, a uh, man by the name of Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther, a white German guy, uh, said, there are some things within the Catholic Church that I don't agree with. And uh, he started a series of protests which caused another division within the Catholic Church. This group was known as the Protestants. So the Protestants uh, were those who protested against what was going on in the Catholic Church. And as you can see here, there are many denominations or branches 
of the Protestants, the Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterians, Church of God, Lutheran, Seventh-day Adventist, Pentecostal, Evangelical, non-denominationals, and many others. Uh, some even say there's in the range of 50 to a couple hundred different denominations. So, this is kind of the realm of Christianity. And all this ties back to the Jews and the Isaac side of the Abrahamic religions. So once again, in summary, Abraham, two kids, one from the servant girl, one from his wife, and from these two sons has stemmed forward two of the major world religions in Christianity slash Judaism and Islam.